Hey guys, welcome to our joining us today. Um, we hope that you find this session helpful and informative. Facebook is such a comprehensive tool with tons of really neat features to help businesses of all sizes. So be sure to stick around to the end to get as much as you can out of this session. Um, this should only be about 35, 40 minutes. So hopefully you will get a ton out of this and don't feel stuck on something. Feel free to drop us a line at hello at flourishconsultingservices.com or um, just hit us up on social media and we will help you as much as we can. So let's go ahead and get started. First things first, kudos to you. Uh, we are excited that you decided to take advantage of this course today. Uh, Facebook can seem a bit of a beast sometimes and it's often changing. So doing things like this will really help make sure that you stay on top of it and you get to know how to use this platform to help your business thrive. Just a little bit about us. Flourish is a women's small owned business based in Huntsville, Alabama, and we are a full service marketing and public relations of all sizes and provide a ton of resources to include strategic planning, digital marketing, web development, media and public relations, social media, and so much more. We were founded in 2018 and we love, love, love what we do. Um, every day we get to partner with businesses, again, of all sizes and do fun. So hopefully you can take advantage of not only these workshops, get a chance to meet our team as well um, because we've got a lot of great info and um, hopefully you can use it to help your business grow. So we're going to jump into this presentation and I'm going to give you a quick overview of what you can expect um, from the session today. So first things first, we love it so much. Um, we're also going to then walk you through how to set up a Facebook business page and how to make it work in your favor. Um, and then we're going to finish it out talking a little bit about Facebook ads, boosted posts, and give you some tips for a solid marketing strategy on Facebook. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into topics that you can learn about. All right, so quick overview and why we love Facebook for business. So a couple quick stats, which this is pretty crazy. I'm going to run through these, but if you can imagine, Facebook has a little over 2.4 billion people on it every single month. And of those, a little over two thirds of them visit a face. It's pretty insane. One of the little stats that I love that we talk to our clients a lot about is that most consumers or individuals who are looking for a job when they're, when they are researching a company, they do one of two things. They either go check you out on Facebook or they go check out your website. So if you are a business and you interact with consumers in any page, Additionally, 85% of buyer-seller interactions will happen on Facebook by the end of 2020, and almost 75% of U.S. adults check Facebook once a day. The demographics are a bit different than what they once were, and they are getting a little bit older, as you can imagine, but there are a lot of people on the platform that are huge teen following, believe it or not with over 40% of teenagers actually on the platform. And although, although TikTok has kind of been hailed the latest craze, there's still a big market on the Facebook platform for teens in that lower demographic. Uh, also too, one thing that's really interesting is that women are more likely to create meaningful Facebook groups of all the fundraisers that actually occur on Facebook. In case you didn't know, you can raise money on Facebook. It's pretty cool. Okay, so just a couple things that we want to talk about um, as, as far as why we love Facebook for business. There's a lot of different things here that we love so much about it, but these are probably the top three. It allows you to get leads and then traffic to your website and a lot more. So this is a great way where you can be able to use a lot of the built-in tools to be able to interact with your customers, whether it be through Facebook Messenger, or it'd be just engaging through posts on your site. Um, you can be able to do some tailored advertising that really promotes different uh, coupons or discounts or things that you can do here as it relates to engaging with your customers. In addition, it sort of acts as though it's your digital storefront, and it just allows you to engage just as much online as you would face to face. So there, this really allows for a great way for you to put your best foot forward, allow customers not only to see that you offer, but also get a really great insight into what your company culture is like as well, which is pretty cool. Um, in addition, you've got features such as Facebook Live, watch parties, different videos that you can post, things like that. So it really allows you to go beyond just that simple image and copy post and take it a little bit 
deeper into what you're going to talk about in a little bit, Facebook is a phenomenal tool for targeted marketing. So you can really be able to identify which audiences, demographics, location, behaviors, you name it. All of these different factors that you can pull into building a custom audience. That way you can be able to tailor the people that you want to go after and targeted marketing component built into Facebook is that you can really be able to see real time how your ads are performing. So, you know, back in the day, we used to do a lot of traditional advertising where you would either purchase and not that there's anything wrong with it, but you would either purchase a billboard or maybe a print ad in a newspaper, if anybody knows what that is, and to use a digital platform such as Facebook to be able to do so. But what that allows you to do, and it gives you a little bit of a leg up from what you were doing before, is it really provides this um, targeted opportunity to reach the audience that you identify as opposed to just casting the net and hope that you Okay, a couple other things that we love so much about this as well is it really loves you to totally kick butt when it comes to customer service. So people don't want to wait 24 hours for a response. They don't want to wait a week for a response. They want to get something real time and immediate. That way they can be able to make a decision where they used to be, where you would be a little bit slower in your decision making process and that there's pros and cons to that of course but having the ability to interact with your customers real time whether it be through inside a private group that's specific to your product or service um, it be through facebook messenger where you're able to reach out to them right off the bat, or video that they can respond to right off the bat um, it really allows you to perfect that customer service component and build that relationship with your customer from, from the get-go. Additionally, it allows you to expand your brand. So as I mentioned before, it really allows somebody the opportunity to sort of peek behind the curtain and get to know your organization who are a subject matter expert in pool installation. And so you can be able to showcase some videos on what your process looks like from sitting down with the client if you're building a new pool construction all the way to, you know, maybe redoing an existing one where the, the foundation has just settled and cracked over time and so you're needing to relook at your mindset and how you approach certain situations that way they can understand if whether or not they feel like your brand is a good fit for them and this sort of plays into the last one here as well about showcasing your expertise so again it's a great way for you as an individual you as a business you as a service provider have that you are trying to pull people in and sell to um, as it relates to what you're doing. So if you happen to be, um, and we'll just use maybe a cleaning company. So you could use Facebook to be able to show some videos about this, the particular types of ways that you clean certain types of furniture or certain types of homes or certain types, maybe you're giving some cleaning tips. Um, you're talking about some of the, the great products that are out there that people can use it uh, at their home as opposed to maybe just as opposed to having to spend a lot of money, um, you know, taking an alternative option. So being able to provide that value, educating your customers is a great way to keep them informed and keep them engaged. Right. So now we're going to talk a little bit about how you actually get started using a Facebook business page. So we're not going to go too, too deep into walking you through how to set this up in granular detail. Instead, we're going to, instead, we're going to go ahead and pretend that you already have one um, as we're going to send out some details on how to do this after the fact. We have a download that also um, came along with this webinar, so make sure that you take a look at those, but they will actually kind of walk you through step by step how to go about doing this. So this is sort of the 30,000 foot view. So first things first, you want to create your business page. Um, you do need a personal account on Facebook to be able to begin. Um, and then once you set that up, you can then be able to a business, a brand, a community or public figure. They'll give you some options that you want to go through and go ahead and select. And then, of course, you need to submit your business information, which will include a description, location, services, photos, your Facebook username and more. Um, the Facebook username is something that a lot of people don't really give a sign what that looks like because that can easily be something that you can be able to promote to individuals to say, hey, make sure you follow us on Facebook. You can find us at, you know, at Grow Your Business Huntsville, whatever it might be. Um, so you'll, it'll pre-assign a, um, you know, a Facebook username when you go to actually set up that account, but you have the option to. In addition, you also want to indicate what your call to action is. So a call to action or CTA is a common term that we use in the marketing world. And bottom line, it's, it's, it represents whatever you want your customers or, or following to do. Do you want them to join your mailing list? 
Do you want them to purchase a product? Do you want them to come into your store to try a new flavor of ice cream or to try a new recipe uh, for, for a meal or a cookie that you're making, depending on what you do? Think about what your call to action is. And you can be able to integrate that action onto your business page. That way, when people have the opportunity to interact, to do. In addition, you want to tell your story. So make sure that you are um, you know, telling the story of your brand. Think through the images that you choose for in your profile and your cover image. Think through the content that you include on the description page. Um, Facebook also has an opportunity to use what's called a story. It helps you and allows you to tell that compelling story of who you are as a brand. So think through some of those things and, and take advantage of it because guess what? It's free. So why not take advantage of it as much as you possibly can? So what we're gonna do is jump into an example of a Facebook business page that I personally really, really love. And bar, my personal favorite Cliff Bar happens to be peanut butter. It's so, so good. My kids love it. But Cliff Bar is a great company that um, is a nutritional supplement company and they provide a variety of different things to include granola bars and drinks and all sorts of different stuff. It's awesome. Love Cliff Bar. Anyway, so one of the things, that, so we're going to kind of take a little um, snapshot behind this, this page so you can see some of the things that we want to point out. So over here you can see on the home menu there's a variety of different options that sort of act like a table of contents, if you will, that you can be able to use um, to direct people to maneuver through your page. So you have you, or you want people to congregate and be there and see all of your updated content. They can drop, drop directly to just your posts. That way they avoid seeing anything else on that page. They can jump to just your photos, your videos, if you have any events associated with this business page, um, and then learn a little bit more about you by checking out your about options that you have available to you to either use or you can eliminate them from your business page. Some of these are uh, will set as a default and so you can't change them. But for example, if you need to eliminate that events tab, because frankly, you just don't hold any events that you want to promote through Facebook, um, then that's not an the other thing that we love up here as well about this cover image is that it's in, it's in, it's a video. So it's not just this still image that's sitting up there that every single time somebody comes back and they see the same exact thing. This is a, right off the bat when you take a look at this video, you get who Cliff Bar is. Um, you know, this is a video that features they're you know doing all these really cool athletic things. So you can tell right off the bat this is who they are trying to target. This is the kind of persona and brand that they want to represent around Cliff. That way, when you think of athletics and sports and doing things outdoors, that you think of Cliff Bar. Um, the other section here that you'll find the most updated posts that you've actually put onto your page. It will also allow a guest or a visitor to be able to post potentially um, if the business has it set up that way. So some businesses don't allow you to post to their page. Some businesses don't allow you um, to tag them unless it's approved. Um, that way, But this is where you're going to be able to find the most recent posts that your business has um, actually published. Now, if you do have particular posts that maybe you published last month, or even three weeks ago, and they've done really, really well, you can actually pin a post to the top of your page. That way, when people come back, even if they're going to see when they come to your business page. In addition, you can see over here under the community section. And so the community section really outlines all of the all of the followers and fans and people who, who like your page. And it allows you to be able to see um, any if any of your friends like this page. And invite, so I could go to Cliff Bar and invite a bunch of my friends to like this page. But oftentimes you'll see that if a business has a lot of followers and a lot of people like this, that's that's in essence how many people are going to be served up the content when Cliff Bar publishes it. Now, granted, based on the Facebook algorithm, not every single person that is following your like you're going to have a really high engagement and a pretty large reach if you have something like this, 300 plus thousand people following your page. That's pretty awesome. In addition, you'll see the about section here, which will outline your phone number your website URL, what type of company you are, and any other information that you can include on here. Um, see the little messenger button down here where it says away, send message. 
um, you can it actively interact with the brand right then and there by clicking that button and sending Cliff Bar a message. Um, the messenger feature is something that, in my personal opinion, is somewhat of an underutilized feature. Um, you can be, as a business, you can be in and answers. That way, when somebody clicks that messenger button, it'll automatically pop up and perhaps address some of the most commonly asked questions that you might get. So, for example, um, if you, if a lot of people are constantly asking your ice cream store what your hours are, first things first, you want to include that on your Facebook page for that question, or you get the question of what is your flavor of the week? You can be able to load that into Messenger. That way if somebody asks that question through Messenger, it's automatically going to pop up and be displayed when they click that button. So it's a really great feature that allows you to somewhat automate that engagement and eliminate the need to respond to somebody. All right, and then over here, you've also got, this is where the call to action is. So that send message button can actually be tweaked based on whatever call to action you include here. So it could be, you know, a link to the website, it could be a link to your, your boutique, it could be a link to your video section, it could be a link to a variety of different things, again, which you have that option when you have. If you learn nothing else about promoting your business on Facebook, we want you to learn one thing. You absolutely must know your audience. Knowing your audience is probably the most important thing in the world. And so often, um, you know, we work with clients who don't understand who they're actually marketing their product or service to. And let's, if you don't have that stuff figured out. So who is your customer? Where do they live? How old are they? What is their education level? You need to figure out where these people like to spend their time and what matters to them. So again, looking at this Cliff Bar, um, you know, Facebook business page, you can tell they've got a pretty idea of who their market to. They publish content, um, you know, that they know their audience really enjoys. And by knowing those types of things, it's going to ensure that you have a higher engagement and your presence on Facebook is going to be a little bit more successful. In addition, you really want to know what your pain points are of your audience. So why are they in things? Are they wanting to learn? What sort of problems do they have that you can help solve? And I'll give you an example of that. So I am a mom of three. And although we have a pool in our backyard, one of the things that really caused me concern when we initially moved in was whether or not my youngest son would, he was young, he hadn't quite learned how to swim yet. And so that is a huge, huge, huge concern of mine. So even though a pool company might want to sell to us for their services, since we were a new resident in this home, um, having a pool company to be able to come and take care of the pool, treat it, perhaps offer us a new liner, um, maybe fix our diving board. Leading with thinking about a diving board. What I'm going to be leading with and what matters to me as it relates to my pool is pool safety. So as a pool company, if they're looking to market to someone such as myself, they should really be providing content around pool safety. Because from my standpoint as a consumer, I'm going to look at that business and develop as though they have my best interest at heart, as opposed to trying to sell me on their pool cleaning services. Is that important? It is. But what's more important to me is the safety of my kids. So by knowing what those pain points are of your customer, you'll be able to then provide custom content that really answers those questions that they are looking for and over time with the hopes of actually turning them into a real customer. And in addition, this sort of goes along the same lines of knowing what information they are seeking. So oftentimes people don't know they have a problem until it's pointed out to them, unless of course it's staring at them in the face. But you know, think about things that it, with your career and with your background, if you have identity to use this example, but a lot of homeowners who happen to have a pool in their backyard don't realize that, you know, potentially after 15 years, their liner needs to be replaced because of, you know, whatever reason, who, who knows. Um, that would be something that maybe most people may not realize, especially if they moved into a home that had an existing. So that could be something that, hey, did you know that a liner needs to be replaced after 10 years? Because if it's not, it can get wear and tear and actually cause a leakage into the foundation, which can cause, you know, these types of problems, so on and so forth. So being able to just, again, educate your customers that way they build trust and they know about how and why. Okay, so once you've got your Facebook business page set up, we're going to give you some tips on how you can best promote it. So we're going to look at a couple different types of options here. So 
Um, Facebook offers a lot of different variety as it relates to how you can be able to promote yourself, your service, um, and your brand on Facebook. I'm going through a lot of these, but frankly, we don't have time, and I'm sure you don't want to hear me talk for that long. So we're going to cover off high level on a couple of these and then do a little bit of a deep dive into a couple and show you some examples of what those look like. So video ads. Video has the power to grab an audience's attention really, really easily. Business, product demo, teammates, and your video ads can run in news feeds, stories, in-stream ads, and longer videos, all sorts of different things. Videos are way more captivating than just still images. Um, you have a lot of, you see a tendency to have a higher engagement rate on video versus static images. Again, knowing your audience with how you create that video is really going to be helpful, but this is something that really allows you to instantly create um, a feeling, emotion, and action, which helps to engage people with your brand. Image ads really present your business um, you know, with a simple, clean image format to the audiences um, and with a high quality visual engine. It's a very straightforward, very simple. You can use powerful images to represent what it is that you're doing. Um, one piece of advice that I will give you here is that people like to look at people that they can relate to. So stay away from stock images that don't look like the everyday person and don't look like the normal person that your customer can relate to. Their figure is cinched and they're, you know, airbrushed beyond belief. No one's going to want to really think that they can confide and look like that person. So it's only going to push people away from your brand, then pull them in. Trust me. <laughs> Lead generation ads is another one that we like a lot because it, it allows you to present, um, you know, an image, video, carousel, or an actual actual lead form that people can kind of fill out. Uh, the lead generation ad type on Facebook and Instagram um, helps you gather audience contact information who are interested in your business or product and services. So it's a great way for you to be able to capture that lead data directly from Facebook. You add up to 10 images or videos about your business or product or service into a single ad, which is really cool. Um, and you can be able to add an individual link to each of the image or video. So think about it if you have a, a boutique or you have a shoe store or you sell jewelry. Um, a carousel ad will allow you to show or services where you can actually link individually um, to, to where you can go find that product directly to the customer. So it's a great way to be able to gauge in that regard. Um, and the last two we have are offers ads and event responses. So offers ads are their discounts that you can be able to share with those those that you that follow you in different ways, whether it be an image, a video, or a carousel. But if you're promoting something where you have a discount or it's a buy one, get one free or something along those lines, an offers ad is a great way to do that. And then again, we have events. So event responses can actually be used to promote your event and also be able to promote it to other people who's RSVP'd. So it's a great way to be able to pull people in, um, let them know that you have something in the community going on, and by people RSVPing from it right there from the ad, um, others can be able to see that they've actually RSVP'd, which will help grow the promotion around that event even more. Okay, so we're going to look at, do a little, so this is an actual video ad, and you can see here, this was run on the Super Bowl. I love this ad, this gentleman from Stranger Things, he's awesome. Um, but you can see how right off the bat, as you're scrolling through this feed, you know, you see this engaging ad by Tide. It was a Super Bowl commercial that ran. Um, it's got hashtags built into the copy, which is always good. Like Tide ad, they can be able to, this, they can be able to see this along with any other ad that ran um, using that hashtag. Uh, but it really pulls people in um, right off the bat and gets them engaged. One thing that I like here as well is that there's, um, you know, there's there's text at the bottom here, which really helps for people to see what this ad is scrolling through their feed because frankly, it can get really annoying. Um, so by having text here at the bottom, it's gonna really help people see what the ad is about without having to physically hear it. Okay, another thing that we like here as well, this is an example of the image ad. So it really showcases what the actual image looks like along with your description of this in our office. A lot of businesses use it to be able to interact and communicate with their teams. Um, but this is a great image ad because it directly showcases what the product looks like. This is a screenshot of how the Slack app will actually work on a phone. 
Um, and what I like about this as well is what they've done is they have the call to action down at the bottom right hand corner of install now. And it'll take you directly to um, either the Google Play Store or any other place where they're actually offering it with the App Store. So it's sort of a two click deal where you click on this, you download it to your phone and then boom, you're done. So the, the, you know, the length of time that spans between the interaction with the ad and actually downloading the app itself is built. This is an example of the carousel ads that we were talking about earlier. I really like this because it allows you to kind of see as you're scrolling through your Facebook feed what you have the opportunity to view. So can you show one image? Sure, but why not show 10? Especially if you, again, have a boutique, a clothing line, um, you're selling jewelry of things that you offer without having to jump directly into your store online and peruse themselves. You're doing the perusing right here. And the good thing about this, again, thinking about the targeted advertising is that if you can be able to develop carousel ads targeted around that audience that you are very aware of, then this is gonna happen. Anybody who knows me knows that I love facial products and um, organic skin lotions and oils and all that kind of stuff. I don't like to wear a ton of makeup. I like to really keep my skin clean, but I really like to wear things that help with anti-aging. And so being able to understand that those are the needs that I like, putting on a cell ad will immediately pique my interest as this is a company that offers products that I'm really interested in. It's a great way to engage. Okay. So there's a couple different ways that you can actually leverage some of these um, different types of ads that Facebook has, and it's it's kind of twofold. One, we Facebook ads. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about boosted posts real quick, and then we're going to dive in and show you an example of each. So, um, and, and one thing to keep in mind of is that you know you need to really figure out what your advertising goals are before you actually start advertising on Facebook, because some goals can be reached again by either boosting or creating an individual ad. And it's really who your audience is and what you're trying to achieve. So you really wanna ask those questions first before you dive in and start tackling some of these. So a boosted post is just a post that is, um, you know, is a post that's on your page's timeline that you can actually apply money to in order to boost it to an audience of your choosing. And then you expand that map and draw a circle around it. Um, that's in essence what you're able to do with boosting. So you're putting, a, you're investing a little bit of money, five, 10, 15, $10,000, however much you want. You're identifying who your audience is and you're expanding the reach that that particular post will. It's the simplest way to advertise on Facebook and it differs from Facebook ads because they're not created in the ads manager, um, which is a little bit more complex when you get into advertising but it's, it's a little bit more limited in some of the custom, customization features. So when you boost a post, it'll actually show up in your audience. Um, and for those of you that don't know, Facebook owns Instagram. So if you're also on Instagram, you can easily be able to select that that boosted ad actually gets shown on Instagram as well. Um, you can choose a post that's already been present on your page's timeline, or you can create a new post and then boost it. So a couple of things that you're gonna want to reach because you'll want to pick a target audience um, of the type of people that you want to connect with. You want to determine what your budget is. Um, so you'll determine how much that you want to spend over the course of the ad. So let's say, for example, if we are hiring and we're having a very, we need someone on board right off the bat, we can, we can promote this to invest $100 over the next three days to the audience that is within you know, 15 miles of our particular zip code. So we can determine the time frame, determine the budget, determine who we want to target it to, and then that particular ad is going to be showcased in front of that audience over the next three days. And that hundred dollars is going to get me as really get with that amount of money. And Facebook will tell you what those expected impressions are going to be. That way, you have a little bit of an idea ahead of time. And then just keep in mind that boosted posts are still considered ads because they do require a budget to be shared with a wider audience. Um, so this is just something to think about because when you do actually receive your bill from pay Facebook right, as an ad, not just a boosted post. So just keep that in mind. And that may be getting into the details too much, but just something to keep in mind. So then the second piece here is a Facebook ad. So although boosting a post is still considered an ad, Facebook ads are actually created a different way, and they're created through the being an ad is that they offer more advanced customization solutions. So there's a lot of different advertising objectives, which we sort of talked about a little bit, that help you reach your specific goals. 
and the audiences that you care about. Um, but this, the you know, using Ads Manager really gives you that flexibility um, to be able to do what you want. Um, here is that you can be able to choose different ad placements. So when you boost a post, you'll be able to check or uncheck whether or not you want to place your ad in Instagram in addition to Facebook mobile or in the desktop newsfeed. Um, you also get the added benefit of choosing placements in different places like the Facebook newsfeed, um, instant articles, and the audience network. Again, you've got a lot more flexibility around that aspect of things. Um, you can also use a very specific ad objective. So this will help determine whether or not you want to increase website clicks, clicks or increase your page engagement, um, You know, promote local business promotions, you about the objectives behind what you want that ad to do. Um, with the Facebook Ads Manager, it also allows you to maintain a little bit more creative control. Um, so, you know, you can be able to design an ad that really fits your goals more so than you can with a boosted post. So this is where you can be able to create this carousel action button that will drive more of your audience to take that action. Um, and these are these are only a few of the creative and formatting options available. Um, there's a lot, but it just gives you, again, more flexibility. And it also gives you a little bit more um, advanced targeting capabilities. So although boosting lets you decide on interests, age, and advanced tools, um, where you can do lookalike audiences, uh, audience types, and things of that nature. So it just gives you a little bit more flexibility and detailed um, detailed exposure to really who you're wanting to go after. So a couple of things that I wanted to kind of point out here, um, that way you can kind of see a little bit about what a page looks like. Take a look at the different options that you have here. So you can be able to see that it allows you to see what the actual post would look like. Um, you can be able to customize the content that you have there, whether or not you want to use a single image, a video, a carousel, do a slideshow of images. There's a lot of different options here that you can be able to go through, it looks like. So for this particular exercise, we're going to promote what a social media workshop might look like, um, which we have done. So this is a GIF image that we created, um, which is just an interactive image that adds a little bit of movement to it, um, which really helps to engage an audience a little bit more. Uh, we can be able to change up the headline, maybe some of it looks like. Um, there's a lot of different features here that will allow us to change up what this looks like, and then you can be able to see how that actually comes across on the ad itself. Um, so the more that you play around with this, the more that you'll learn about some of the flexible um, options that you have available to you. And long story short is that worst comes to worst and then change it. One of the things that we love about Facebook um, advertising is that you can do what's called A-B testing, where you select the same exact audience, but you run two different pieces of creative. So you can select, uh, we're going to go back to that, you know, that um, option of targeting the mom who's interested in you know, different types of photos or images to advertise to that audience and then see which one performs better, which is awesome because that will really allow you to see that, hey, perhaps the video performed better or the image performed better, better or the image that featured a child performed better than the image that featured just a woman um, or a available here that you can be able to work with um, that'll help you on your journey as you advertise. It's pretty awesome. All right. So understanding some of the insights within Facebook is really, really important as well. So we want to go over a couple different things here because as you jump into Facebook and you start to identify some of the features that you have in your ads, um, a couple of those things may seem a little bit confusing, so you may not know what they are. So again, we're going to jump back in here and I'm going to show you how you go and take a look at some of these insights. So this is our Facebook homepage, and if you click on more, you'll be able to go into the insights section and see some of the stats behind some of the posts that, that you're reviewing the insights. You want to take a look at engagement. So engagement measures the number of times that somebody took an action on your posts. So that could mean by clicking a link, sharing a post, making a reaction, leaving a comment. Engagement is one of the most important phases. Engagement is a sign that people actually like the content you're sharing. But another reason engagement is so valuable is that it may give your posts more exposure to your audience. So engagement is one of those things that Facebook uses to monitor and measure how often and um, how successful a particular post may be. If it's not deemed engaging, perhaps a more engaging post would. So pay attention to this number because it's pretty important. 
reach is another factor that you want to be able to review. So reach is the number of people um, that your con number of people your content is seen by on Facebook. So this can be through either a paid or organic effort and feed or an algorithm based um, feed years ago. And so what happens to a lot of business, um, what they have seen is that they saw drastic drops in the amount of people that their content actually um, reached. So uh, some studies, studies have shown that, um, that there's a reported as low as 2.6%, which is pretty, it doesn't mean that they'll see all of your posts. So this is where reach comes into play. So you really just want to pay attention to, again, the content that does really, really well and make sure that you're continuing to do content like that. Another feature that you want to think about is impressions. So impressions is, excuse me, it's related to the visibility of your post, how many people saw your posts, but impressions actually measures the number of times your posts were seen. So let me repeat that. So although reach will tell you how many people actually saw your posts, impressions measure the number of times that it was seen. So if I saw that pool ad three or four or five times, that impression on seeing that ad once, but seeing it five times over and over and over again. So impressions can give you a good idea of the quote unquote viral nature of a post. So one person may get exposed to one of your posts multiple times, um, but some may get exposed to it just one time. So those are things just to keep in mind. We strongly recommend that you pay attention to it. Um, and just peruse the, the menu that you have because there's a lot of different um, engaging things that you can be able to see here of how long people watch the video, um, you know, what the engagement was over time. Um, so, and we don't sell anything on our site, but this can be able to give you some insight into that aspect of things as well and how they performed. Um, if you put any money behind them, you can see what their reach might be. Uh, there's a lot of different tools here that can be able to help you with that. Okay. So there's a couple of additional tools that we love here with Facebook. So I'm just going to talk about them briefly. And I know I mentioned this before, but Facebook Messenger. Facebook Messenger is probably one of the most with customers all over the place. So this was a crazy stat, guys, that I found where every month businesses exchange more than 20 billion with a B messages with people on Facebook Messenger. That is insane. So a couple benefits of using Facebook Messenger provides awesome quality customers, helps to build trust in your brand because people, you can get back to people right off the bat and answer questions that they might have, allows you to generate high quality leads, increase the customer's intent to purchase. Um, you can take some otherwise sensitive topics private. So if somebody doesn't want to post something on your page to ask a question, they can do it. It is now a preferred way to talk to a business when it comes to customer service, if you can believe that. So almost 64% of people across age groups say they'd rather message a business than call or email, which is pretty crazy, pretty crazy. All right, we've also got Facebook Live. And so Facebook Live is a feed camera on a computer or mobile device to broadcast real-time video to Facebook. So live broadcasters can decide who on Facebook can see their video and use this content to engage their audience during the moments and events that are important to them, which is pretty awesome. It's a great way to engage, a great way to ask questions and prompt people to, in a great way that you can actually promote the live prior to, to build momentum around a particular event um, or initiative that you might have going on. Um, there's also Facebook Pixel, which is pretty cool. And Facebook Pixel is an analytics tool that really allows you to measure the effectiveness of your advertising by understanding the actions that people do a lot of things. Like you can make sure that your ads are shown to the right people. It can help you find new customers or people who have visited a specific page or have taken a desired action on your website. Um, you can drive more sales. If you are in the e-commerce business and you physically sell products um, or services, you can be able to, um, with the Facebook Pixel, you can be able to set up automatic bidding, which is pretty cool. That way you can reach the people who are more likely to take an action that you care about. Um, and so if they've purchased things on Facebook previously that might be comparable to yours, the Facebook Pixel can be able to track that a bit and drive your ads to yours. Um, it also allows you to 
um, be able to fire, um, the Facebook pixel can fire when someone takes an action on your website. So for an example, this might include adding an item to their shopping cart or making a purchase. The pixel will actually receive these actions and events, which you can view on your Facebook pixel page in events that your customers take, which is pretty cool. So it kind of follows people around and then can be able to trigger certain actions based on their behaviors. A little bit scary, but also pretty cool. And then the last is third party integrations. So you can use um, third party integrations to do a variety of things. Um, you can integrate Google Analytics, you can implement a chat bot, um, you can integrate Zoom. And now that we're all doing virtual, um, virtual everything right now, you can actually send out reminders via Facebook Messenger um, using Zoom, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, so there's a lot of different integrations that you can tack on and be able to leverage the Facebook platform. Okay, so a couple things that we're going to talk about real quick is we're going to talk about how to set up a Facebook marketing strategy and just a couple easy steps. So anytime that we talk about strategy, this is the one thing, this is something that we get really, really excited about because there's a lot of information that you can take away from with this discussion. And even though this, there's actually a lot of really great things here that are ideal for you guys to, to take note on. So I'm going to talk through a couple of these. So number one, as we talked about you know, previously, you need to define your audience. Um, to engage your audience effectively, you've got to understand who your target audience is. So again, we ask these questions or you need to ask yourself a couple of questions. How old is your target audience? Where do they live? What kind of jobs do they have? What are their challenges and pain points? How and when do they use Facebook? Make sure that you understand some of the demographics behind your audience. That way you can be able to target them appropriately. This is really to make sure that you set your goals. It can be tempting to focus on like vanity metrics, like just racking up likes on your page, for example. But unless those likes are part of a broader marketing plan, they're not really going to provide a great return. So for a Facebook marketing strategy to be effective, you've got to set clear goals that are tied, you know, vary for every single business, but they should all focus on actions that have a real impact on your bottom line. So for example, do you want to generate leads? Do you want to increase conversions on your website? Do you want to improve customer service? These are all the types of things that you want to think about when you're building out your Facebook marketing strategy. So third, you want to set a budget, understand how much money you are willing to spend. So this is something that if you haven't done it before, it's gonna take some time, it's not gonna happen overnight, uh, but you need to figure out what you're comfortable in spending. And when you think about your overarching marketing strategy, Facebook, social media, digital marketing, that's just what businesses that um, spend 100% of their advertising efforts through Facebook, and that's great. But there's others that will look at creating a marketing mix. So yes, you've got a budget towards digital and Facebook, but you guess what? You also have a budget towards maybe some print and traditional advertising, perhaps joining some associations or networking groups you know, either existing customers to help grow that business. Um, there's a variety of different avenues that you can be able to pursue for marketing. Um, and social media and Facebook certainly does not have to be the only one. So just make sure that you establish what that budget is and you're comfortable with that ahead of time. Next, you really need to think about plant. Number one, don't think that just because you build your website that people will come, or your Facebook page, that people will come visit it, because they won't. Um, you need to build that over time and create engaging content that, pe that people actually like to see. So again, going back to that example that I provided earlier about my, my pain points of well, those are types of pieces of content that I'm really going to resonate with because that's what matters to me most. I want to make sure that my kids are safe and that nobody gets hurt. So I want to read content. I want to, I want to read articles about pool safety and I want to read articles about how to protect my kids during the summer heat and what types of maybe do an evaluation of different. You can go on and on and on about what type of educational content would resonate with your audience, but think through that first and don't just post for the sake of posting. It's the same thing as well coming down with the ads. Really think through what your ads look like um, and make sure that they're engaging and again, they're informative. Make sure they're not passive in any way. Um, you know, you want to make sure that the creative that you're choosing for your ads and the content that you're using to supplement it really resonates with those pain points that your audience has. Um, you also need to optimize your page for engagement. 
sounds kind of silly, but people need to be able to find your page. You need to make it, you want them to learn more about your brand. So again, put some thought into your cover image. Um, link your Facebook page to your signature block, include it in your newsletter, incorporate the Facebook like button and share those buttons on your website. Make sure that you're using a call to action. There's a lot of different ways that you can be able to promote that site as much as you also want to make sure that you utilize that A-B testing um, among some other things. A-B testing is pretty awesome in that it allows you to um, really be able to test a couple different pieces of creative at the same time, the way you can see what is most engaging for your audience. So as I mentioned before, pick one audience and run graphics and see which one performs better. That way you can be able to determine what's going to work best for your audience in the future and you can put more money behind that. All right. So I think you guys are probably done hearing me chat too, too much. Um, but I just want to, you know, congratulate you for taking this course and just listening in a little bit with us. There is so much information to learn about it. And to be honest with you, it's changing all the time. But if you need someone to be able to help walk you through and come up with a good strategy for Facebook, please don't hesitate to reach out and just let us know. Um, we do offer free consultations to be able to help you with some of your marketing needs. It may be focused around Facebook or other. The bottom line is, is that you need to focus on your customer and think about what your core objectives are and then go from there. So don't think that you have to be on Facebook because everybody else is. You need to be where your customers are and you need to be on the platform where your customers spend their time that way you can be able to resonate with them, engage with them, provide that you can build those relationships for long-term return. So thank you guys so much for joining us today. Um, again, we appreciate your time. We hope that you found this very informative. Um, if you didn't, you can let us know, but if you did, hopefully you'll join us for another session. We've got lots of great webinars on our website to download and they're completely free. So please do that and just 